Hi guys, so welcome back to another video on Service Fabric. In this video, we're going to continue our look at Service Fabric actors. So one thing I didn't mention in the previous video is that actors can be communicated and created from calls from stateful and stateless services, as well as other actors. So actors can actually create more actors in a system. So that's just an interesting uh, little bit of information. We can proxy from actor to actor, but this is one thing we need to be careful of when using actors as because they're single threaded, if we're making long running calls with them, this can actually cause a backlog in our entire system. So actors should really be things that execute quite quickly and aren't relying on overly complex calls and a, a long call chain to, to other actors that may take some time as this could cause deadlocks in our system. So we're back in our product actor service here and we can see one thing we didn't discuss in the last video is this method here, this on activate async. And what does this do? So this is a method that's called when our actor activates. So when our actor is first activated or when it reactivates, this method will call and it will allow us to do something. There's a number of other methods that we can override. So say for instance, we have on deactivate async. So this might be something we want to do when the actor is deactivated. So for now, we'll just log out uh, actor deactivated using the actor event source, which is very similar to the service event source, which we can use for logging. So one thing to note about the kind of actor lifecycle is that actors, as we said, are first activated when a call is made to any of its methods. And then an actor is deactivated uh, if it's not used for a configurable period of time. It's also possible to manually delete an actor at any stage, which we'll see later in this video. So when an actor is deactivated, the garbage collection process in C-sharp only cleans up the actor's object. It does not remove the state stored in the actor's state manager. So the next time the actor is activated again, a new actor object is created and its state is restored. So this means that even true garbage collections and actor deactivations, our state can be maintained. So as well as on deactivate async and on activate async, there's, there's a couple of other methods we can override, including on post actor method async and on pre actor method async. So these two methods are executed just before with on pre and just after any method is called on our actor. In our case, we might want to just log out that. Uh, this method is going to be called shortly on our actor. So let's just add a quick log here. I'm going to call it all sign and we can get the actual method that's being called from this. So method name, this is on post. So we might just say this method has finished. And we can do the same for on pre. This will be executed just before our method is called has will start soon. So when we true a proxy call get product async, this method will be called first. We'll log it. It will start soon then get product async will execute. And then this method, once it's finished, once get product async is finished, this method here on post actor method async will be called. So this will allow us to hook in any sort of interesting thing we want to do pre or post methods. These will be called on every method that's called. So whether we call add product async or get product async, these two methods will be called before and after. But we could add some logic in here that uses the method name to do various different things depending on what method is called or whatever sort of functionality we require. So we talked about deleting actors explicitly there. So how do we explicitly delete an actor in Service Fabric or why do we even want to do it? So as we mentioned previously, if we have the actor state as persisted, this data is stored on disk. So over time, the amount of actors in our system might grow and grow with a lot of data being stored on disk and perhaps our disk space is getting very big. So we might want to start to clear out old actors and the state of old actors as well. So the garbage collector will remove unused actor objects, but their state will remain. So this state will remain on the disk. So there's kind of a separation between the actual garbage collecting of actor objects and the removal of state that might take up room on our disks on our machines, whether we're running a local data center or running on the cloud. So we do this with another proxy call to our actor service. So we'll add a new call to our API to delete the state of a given actor by its ID. So we'll jump back to the product controller, the most relevant HTTP 
verb for this is probably HTTP delete because we're deleting the state. And we'll simply call it public async task delete actor by ID. And from the query parameter, we want to get the ID. So we'll say from query and pass it in the ID of the actor we want to delete. We then need to create the actor ID as usual. So we'll say for our actor ID is equal to new new actor ID. Give it the ID. So that creates the actor ID and then we want to make a proxy. So in this case, we're not creating an actor proxy. We're actually creating an actor service proxy. So we're connecting to the actor service rather than the actor itself. So we'll say actor service proxy dot create. We don't want to need to use the generic version here. And we just want to pass it in the URI to our actor service. So the same as it was before and also the actor ID. Just note in this case, these are actually passed in in a different order from the actor proxy create. The actor service proxy create is different. So we'll say act, save that as actor service proxy. So the proxy service is created and then we can call methods on the actor service proxy. So this is not the same interface we created before. This is the actor service proxy, which contains different methods that might be useful in our application. So we can see here that the two main ones are delete actor async and get actors async. So delete actors async is the one we're interested in here as it will allow us to delete the state of an actor or to completely delete both the state and the actor object itself. While get actors async allows us to enumerate through all the actors in our actor service. So obviously this is quite an expensive operation. So we shouldn't use it unless we have to. But one common way to use this actor service proxy is to on a timer, say once a day or once a week is to immunerate through all our actors, check how old they are or based on some business logic and then start to delete the ones that are over a certain time old or meeting a certain threshold for deletion. So for now, we're just going to call delete actor async. We're going to pass it in the actor ID. And it's just a new cancellation token. And this is a async method, so we have to wait it. And we already have async in our method, so this should be good to go. So let's run this application with our new different parts. We'll set some breakpoints in the on post and on pre methods, and also on deactivate async and on activate async, so we can see the order they're called in. So we'll debug and create a new application, which will allow us to see the kind of life cycle of a actor and also allow us to delete the actor. Okay, so our service is now deployed. So we're going to do the same as before. We're going to post a new product. I'm just going to change the ID of the product to four. So we can send that. Should hit our API, which it does. Same as before, our add product method. We press continue. And we can see that we first hit this on activate async because the actor has now been activated. We still have this boiler paint code here actually. So we're trying to add state with the key count. So this just shows that we can actually have two different states keyed on two different things in our application. So we have the product and we also have this count, which is storing an int. Next, we would expect the on pre actor method async to be called as we're calling this add product async. So this will do anything we want to do before any method is called. Then we'll just jump into the actual method itself, which saves the product finally moving into the on post actor method here. So now this product with ID four has been added to our application. We can do this by changing the ID in our get request to four and sending that to retrieve the product. Again, it should go through the same process. Note the actor is already activated. So on activate async does not get called. So we just simply go to on pre active on pre actor method async into the method itself and then to post and then we return the product to the client. Finally, we can delete the product. So we've added this new HTTP delete call here, same port, API slash product ID, passing in the numeric ID of the product. So we're gonna say four. So we're gonna send that. That should hit our on deactivate async method here. So this means that the actor has actually started to be deleted 
and will be deleted. And we press OK, and that returns to the client. So if we try and get the actor again now, we should see the same error that we had before. The actor will get activated, we'll try and get the correct product from state, won't exist and should throw an error. So we send that. Again, we hit our breakpoints. We call get product by ID in the API. We go to activate async. So the actor has been activated because it was previously deleted and deactivated on pre. And then we should hit an exception because that object, product object, has never been added to this actor. So that kind of goes through how to delete actors and the lifecycle of an actor and how we can hook into that lifecycle.